does leadership? Good question. Um, well, I mean, leadership, the, the answer to it is not actually straightforward because leadership is an intuitive phenomenon. And, and what I mean by intuitive is that really it, it, it requires quite a lot of individual um, cognitive processing, a bit like ideas like romance and, uh, and freedom, that everyone thinks they've got a definition that's relatively consistent, but the nuances are quite different across the practice. So everyone thinks they're romantic and everyone thinks they're free, but really that's quite a, a subjective, relative statement that um, romance, for example, is something that's really assessed at its reception. It's all fine for me to say I'm the most romantic guy I've ever met. That's not necessarily going to be true because I don't get to decide whether it's good romance that I, that I practice. It's someone else that does that. Same with leadership, that it's intuitive in how it's applied, but actually it's really judged on its reception. And I think that's something that's forgotten quite a lot in leadership, that people think that by applying certain traits, that just by virtue of using them, that they'll come across as being... The, the panacea, the ultimate solution, the way to the heart. And that's not necessarily the case. Uh, so it, it is intuitive and it is a, a sort of individual cognitive processing issue. Um, but there are certain things that you can see are relatively consistent across leadership theory. For example, things like um, the fact that it's got a, an individual team and goal attainment focus, that's pretty consistent across leadership theory, that they all agree to some extent that it's about an individual that applies a certain set of behavioural skills within a group context in order to achieve a common purpose and goal. That's, that's relatively consistent. And, and that can be taken as being, I, I guess, a good starting point. But again, it is intuitive, which means it, it needs to be authentically um, delivered and it needs to be judged on its reception. And those things are, are absolutely fundamental. Another point for leadership, and, and this is a point that really we should involve in our construction of a definition, is that leadership is what we call anthropocentric. It's an anthropocentric phenomenon, not necessarily a, um, a, a resource-based or a management function or something that... Um, can be applied without any well, well, across the broad spectrum of activities. It, it really is specifically about people, and you can't really consider leadership unless you consider it within the paradigm of it affecting people. It's about engaging with people. And that is very much forgotten, and you can see that a lot in the way businesses have been run, that they forget that actually the core heart, the core interaction, the core function of leadership is how does the management relate to people? And what sort of interaction do they have? Is it a healthy interaction? Is it a good interaction? And that's a key point. Next one is, is that leadership is something that really in the modern time has evolved into a human capital issue where people in organizations think that uh, it's the right to be leaders. It's, it's something that's about them. It's an intrinsic worth issue. Um, and that's really not the case. I mean, leadership is what, what I, would, I would prefer to refer to as a social capital issue. It's something that is in this anthropocentric domain that's in people, its effect is measured as in romance, freedom, at the reception end. And if that's the case, then really what we're looking to do is, is develop leadership as being something that contributes to social development. It's something that contributes to the greater good. It's something that contributes to people getting better. It's something that has got a systemic future state at the end of it. Um, and you can't really have that unless you appreciate that leadership is a social function. For example, you have some certain paradigms that exist in leadership if you treat it as human or social. You can have things such as egoism might emerge and it's converse end or it's dialectic. It would be altruism. So one is social, one is intrinsic or individual, or leadership being a, a, a point of privilege or right opposed to being something of service. And again, that is the social versus the individual. Equally, people tend to rely too much on a, a, a power-centered leadership role, which is something that's quite telling and directive. And I don't mean that in an autocratic sense. Please don't think I mean that. I just mean in the sense of how leadership comes across is very much a tell. It's very much uh, got a lot of direction that comes with it, and, and that guidance comes in the form of um, scrutiny and management is really another way of describing it. Instead of leadership being seen as something that's about the impact of influence, something that's about just influencing people in a positive way of engaging and empowering them and, and moving forward. So, I mean, what I would say is that do treat leadership as something that's um, intuitive, treat it as something as anthropocentric, and treat it as something as a social issue. And, and something to remember here is that uh, 
liken love and liken freedom, it's not the egoist, indulgent and power focused that are necessarily that successful at the end of the day. And certainly their memory fades fast or the, the positive parts of their memory diminishes quickly. But it is those that have the strong, enduring, um, faithful commitment to developing people and focusing on making things better, not for themselves, but for other people. They're in the, the end of the day the most successful. I think that's a, a good place to start.